what's going on, my fellow stock market trader and investor homies. It's your boy, Kevin. Welcome back to Touchdown Trades. The country's 16th largest bank just went under. It just collapsed. Game over for this bank. We're going to be breaking that down in today's video, but it gets even better, folks. Our long-lost friend, old Jim Cramer over at CNBC's Mad Money, was touting and pumping this company less than a month before its collapse. Jim Cramer, we call him the human opposite day. It looks like the world's turn opposite, like opposite day. You remember when you were a kid and you were on the playground and another kid in your class, you're probably seven or eight years old, and that little bully in your class called you a butt face. He called you a butt face. So you look at him and say, good thing it's opposite day because you're the butt face. Well, Jim Cramer, is the human opposite day. If you're looking for a good trade, you're looking for that that home run stock, watch Jim Cramer's show. Don't buy what he's recommending. Do what the opposite is of what he's recommending. He is the human bar barometer in reverse. He knows how to pick them, but just the other side of what he's picking. We've talked about him here on this channel several times. He never fails. He picks these stocks almost at a 90% clip, just the opposite. He says the market's crashing, the market rallies. He says the market's about to rally, the market crashes. But this is a different situation. This is a big deal. Jim Cramer has a massive following. His show is watched by millions of people. And he was recommending an extremely high-risk stock less than a month before its collapse. There was rumors there was rumors that this was going to happen while he was recommending this stock. So are there going to be reper repercussions? Are there going to be consequences for the human opposite day? So in today's video, we're going to be discussing what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. Why did this bank collapse? And is this the beginning of a 2007, 2008 style situation? Let's talk about it. Let's get it. Let's break it down. What do you mean the bank is out of money? Insolvent? You only have enough cash for the next three customers! Hey, 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 hey. All right, first, let's talk about what happened to Silicon Valley Bank, and then we'll discuss our old long-lost pal, Jim Cramer. All right, Silicon Valley Bank, how in the hell does this happen in such a short amount of time? Well, to understand what really happened, you got to understand who this bank's clientele was. Silicon Valley Bank, Silicon Valley, it's, it's where the tech companies of the world reside, right? So who was this bank's clientele? It was the startup companies, the startup companies. Now startups, very, very high upside, right? But also the riskiest type of investment. When you invest in a startup company, they have no customers. They have no business. They're starting the business from ground floor up. So when you make that investment into a startup company, it's the riskiest type of investment. Silicon Valley Bank had exposure to over 50% of venture capital-backed startup companies. So their clientele was extremely risky. They were lending money to this clientele. So when you're lending money to these risky startups... That's a risky business, right? Well, things seem to be going decent. The, the stock had a terrible 2021, but there was hope that there was going to be a better 2022. However, they ran into a situation when they could not fulfill the amount of withdrawal requests and their financial requirements. So what did they do? They started looking for a loan to help cover this shortfall. What happened when they started fishing for a loan? Word got out on the street that they were not able to cover their requirements. Once word got out on the street, it was game over. If you were a client or you had money in Silicon Valley Bank and you heard that this was going on, you shit your britches, right? You had a smudge stain in your undie pants. So what did you do? You changed your undie pants and you ran, you hauled ass to the bank trying to withdraw all your money before the bank collapsed. That's called a bank run. When you have a bank run, everybody's trying to get their money out at the same time. The bank can't cover the amount of withdrawal requests. Boom, game over. Bank shuts down. That's exactly what happened, and the feds had to step in. Here's what's really sick about this situation. Over 80% of 
the money and the client money held at this bank is uninsured. The FDIC only insures deposits up to $250,000. We're talking about the clientele who was really big startup companies. So of course they had more than $250,000 sitting in their bank account. Scary stuff here. It's never good. So is this the beginning of the end? Is this the beginning of a 2007, 2008 financial collapse? We shall see. We shall see if there's going to be bank runs at other institutions. Now, I'm skeptical of that. I don't think so. Just because the type of customer that Silicon Valley Bank catered to, they catered to that risky venture capital startup. But if we start to see it in other banks, it could get scary out there in them financial streets. All right, let's talk about our long lost pal, Jim Cramer. He's back at it again. CNBC host Mad Money recommending Silicon Valley Bank stock less than one month before the collapse. All right, and let's see what our old friend over at CNBC, Jim Cramer, had to say a month ago regarding Silicon Valley Bank stock. It doesn't get any better than this. Ninth best performer year to date is SVB Financial. Don't you want this company's a merchant bank with a deposit base that Wall Street had been stakely concerned about. SVB is the old Silicon Valley Bank. Recently bought one of our favorite research firms, Buffett Nathanson, and it's become less dependent upon private equity and venture capitalists. Less offerings. dependent. Wait a second. Those dried up last year. They could come back. Yes, some of them come back here with the stock directly affects an oversold position. Stock was the fourth worst performer in 2022. I think the fears were not justified. Not it's justified. Right. Situation. Hey, by the way, long term private equity and venture capital they're not going away being the banker to these invest immense pools of capital has always been a very good business stock's still cheap not anymore now you have to remember that a cheap. stock that falls 66 percent like svb financial did last year oh it takes it a lot this is more the best to part pay attention here this after best losing two-thirds of your value you need a 200 percent gain to get back to even this is arithmetic some people call it geometry so you could argue svb's nearly 40 percent rally this year is barely a drop in the bucket barely that's a drop in the bucket i think it's oh also- man that's tough that's tough all right so let's take a look at the chart all right so if we look at an hourly chart this thing was trading above 280 dollars a share Right here, news gets out that there's going to be a bank run. News gets out. And look at the stock, what it did during the bank run. From 280, boom, just dropping, dropping like a rock. No relief whatsoever. No way to get out. Ends at $33 per share and gets halted. The Fed step in. Trading is done. If you own stock in Silicon Valley Bank, you're out of luck. Cannot get out. It may resume trading on the pink sheets in the OTC markets, but damn, I feel bad for people who own this stock. If you look at a daily chart, it's even crazier, right? 350, just about three weeks ago to where it is now at zero. Absolute tragedy for shareholders, for people who had their money at this bank. Jim Cramer has to do better. This is a risk. You're you're talking people who watch my channel. We're we're looking at penny stocks. We're looking at higher risk investments. We know this type of thing can happen. But the folks who watch CNBC Mad Money are older. They're less risk adverse. They're looking to make seven percent a year buying big blue chip stocks like Walmart, like Apple, like Target, that type of thing. Home Depot, FedEx, those type of stocks that aren't as risk adverse. And when he recommends a stock that had a terrible 2021 and that there was rumors that the type of customer they were lending to was unable to pay their loans back and that this type of thing could possibly happen and you're recommending that stock to your millions of viewers saying that it's undervalued and that it's 40% rebound was just a drop in the bucket compared to its potential upside. That's dangerous stuff. I'll leave it at that. I absolutely despise Jim Cramer. I think he is a uneducated tout who gets it wrong more often than he gets it right. I have no idea why people watch him and why he has his own TV show that's pretty successful. I much prefer watching Maria Bartiromo in the morning, who may not be the sharpest investor, 
but at least she's straight up, right? She's calling balls and strikes. She's not touting shit box companies like Silicon Valley Bank. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Love you guys. Catch you in the next one. Until next time. Peace.